If you checked out the Originium Dust story, you probably have come across Franka and Liskam. And as you can see, there are a few optical changes in comparison to their OG artworks, most notably Franka's ponytail. With Liskam you might say that it's just her wearing her skin, but the dialogue in the event story implies that there is more to them getting a new fit. Today we're gonna be talking about exactly that, the epic character development your friendly neighborhood Onesan duo went through. Let's begin. In order to make everything a little bit less complicated, let's talk about the timeline of stuff relevant to us today a little bit. Franka, Liskam and the other two Blacksteel girls have arrived at Rhodes Island sometime before the beginning of the main story. The first time we have the pleasure of meeting them is in Chapter 2 and then Chapter 3, where they assist us with taking care of Misha's brother and then Misha. After that, they spend some time on the landship preparing to return to the HQ of their company Blacksteel Worldwide. This included a lot of paperwork, but also a lot of personal attention for Jessica, because she needed it. Liskam was very keen on preparing Jessica as good as possible for her next mission, namely the expedition to a destroyed Chernobyl satellite city we see in Chapter 4. Maybe you remember it, it was the first time we really met Frostnova. Very shortly before the beginning of that mission, Franka and Liskam leave us. Vanilla and Jessica stayed with us. And Vanilla's Stories of Afternoon story, which takes place some time after the main story, tells us that most likely Franka and Liskam returned to the landship at least once. There's no way other Blacksteel girls refers to only Jessica. Otherwise, that would be kinda rude, Vanilla, not gonna lie. But the only time we directly see them outside of the main story is in Originium Dust. There, they appear to have completely changed their styles. There are no black steel logos on them, instead we have a Rhodes Island tower here and the letters on Liskam just spell out Liskam. Creative. There are a few lines in Originium Dust which might indicate why we find the two black steel Onaisans in changed clothes. They are definitely not just wearing them for utility purposes. We can see Liskam talk about her old self, they talk about black steel in the past tense and Grandpa Rain just straight up says that they now are Rhodes Island operators. This is mad interesting. Let's just completely sort out the timeline first before we analyze any further. Was there a time skip between this and that? Many people dislike time skips, me included, but don't worry, because in this scenario we are not dealing with a time skip, but with a passing of a very long time. The main story was here, Originium Dust is here, and the real time skip are the events we had along the way. Most likely even an entire main story arc or more. If you asked me how much time passed between these two locations, I'm gonna say it's at least one year, but most likely far more. All this time gives our characters the opportunity to develop. If anything, Agnes has shown us that its characters are dynamic. I mean, just look at Lava the Purgatory and Cruz got boobs. Seems like the Ara Ara duo might be among the ones who develop, but in what way exactly? Let's check the motivations they initially had when we first met them. Liskam always wanted to have her own security company. Franka always wanted Liskam. While the Draco has always seen Blacksteel as a stepping stone, Franka has always seen Liskam as someone she wanted to step on. So just going by that, it straight up makes sense that they one day would leave Blacksteel, after all, it's just their employer, not their religious group or nation or whatever. But there might be more to it. There is a very certain piece of dialogue in Chapter 2, which I am sure 99% have not given any attention to back in the day. If you even have read the story, that is. What does Franka mean by that? The Blacksteel girls are literally just exchange employees who are at Rhodes Island because the two companies cooperate with each other. This following thing is kinda ominous. Check these few dialogue lines from Originium Dust. Not really that positive, eh? If we think back to Mansfield Break and how Ryan Lab behaved there, we should be aware of the fact that internal conflicts within big companies are a thing. So. Franka and Liskam are not happy with Blacksteel and they somehow want to follow Amir. 
The question is, is that just a reference to the fact that they will leave their company and join Rhodes Island? Or does it imply something else? Actually, the thing Franka said there, is she only talking about her and her victim? Or are there even more people within Black Steel who might be looking for someone to follow? A whole internal faction, maybe? Let's actually formulate today's theory. There will be a Black Steel event depicting internal conflicts within the company, and its result will be, at least, Franka and Liskam leaving Black Steel, or maybe even the breakup and end of the company. The stuff going on within Black Steel right now might make a scenario like that possible. By that I don't mean that they're an evil company, by any means. No, after all, Rhodes Island and it officially cooperate with each other. But Black Steel is expanding, using the economic boom that's happening in Colombia right now. If you expand an organization, you create new ranks, new subdivisions and so on. This gives people with ill intentions and high ambitions the opportunity to find their way in your organization's structure. It's very possible that something like that may change the way an organization like Black Steel operates, at least to a certain degree. Something supporting the idea of a subfaction existing within Black Steel, which is a tad more similar to our own nations, is the absence of a Black Steel Six Star. Which leads us to the following mini theory. The Black Steel Six Star is the leader of the internal faction Franka and Liskam are supporting. Such a scenario would be very interesting to experience, but those two aren't the only Black Steel employees we know. We have to ask ourselves, what would this mean for Jessica and Vanilla? Vanilla first. She left her home village somewhere in the wild regions claimed by the Vuvas because she has set herself a grand goal. She wants to protect Originium slugs. Axia is shaking in her gaming chair. But what we can take away from the fact is that she has joined Blacksteel for a clear purpose and most likely doesn't have a very strong attachment to the company. If we add the fact that she has made many friends at Rhodes Island, we should be able to say that in such a scenario Vanilla would most likely just support the good faction at Blacksteel, which I'm just gonna assume we will support during such an event. But uh, let's move on to Jessica, one of the best, best girls. I am worried for her. Not gonna lie. She is not really known for handling emotionally difficult situations all that well, and unless she has used that one year or so to become a catgirl version of the Terminator, such a scenario would deeply hurt her. Being in a position where she would have to possibly decide between her company and her direct superiors might actually tear her apart. She doesn't really seem like the type of gamer to start a mutiny with the lads. And this leads me to another mini-theory. Jessica will cry. Honestly, as sadistic as that might make me sound, I really want to see such an event just because I want to see how everyone would react. Maybe that moment might actually be the turning point in Jessica's character arc, and from that moment onward she will have confidence in her decisions and whatnot. I'm legit very excited for how all of that would turn out. Now, before we part ways for today, there's something else I want to tell everyone. If we don't get a Ponytail Franka skin during a possible second Rainbow Six Siege collab or whenever, I will literally breathe oxygen. No, but seriously, why isn't this a skin? But this is... I'm sorry, this was a weird thing to ask. Do you know who isn't weird? Our Giga Chat channel members and operators and our 7 epic channel commanders. Ezreal, Big Bob, Chris, LWKY, Mikhail Davidov, Vritten and Zephyrenix. Thank you so much for your support guys, I really mean it. And to you, thanks for watching and I hope I will see you next time. Cheers!